straight to the point. I build any building right next to the geyser. I don't even have to finish it. I make a marine to move in the very corner, so that it goes close to the geyser. Now I start another building right next to it. Thanks to this, the marine is surrounded and no melee enemy can reach him. For certainty, I will set it as close to the center as possible. When the bunker is ready, I put the marine and SCV into the bunker, set the rally point to the foxhole location, and unload the SCV there. Now, the safe SCV can repair the bunker. In this way, I can save an adept from zerglings, protecting him behind pylons during an attack. So, prioritization is the main difference when my unit is in a place where theoretically there is no room for units. As you can see, the attackers prioritize my unit, but when they realize that they can't reach it, they quickly change their target to a lower priority. So if my workers are nearby, and the zerglings are using a move, after a short while they will attack the workers. For example, I'll try to defend a newly built base from zerglings. I've constructed two supply depots next to the geyser, and I can calmly open the Terran doors, let the marine enter the foxhole, and close the door behind him. The SCVs are in danger, but the marine is constantly firing at the enemy. Later, when the base is ready, I'll lower the supply depots so they don't block gas extraction. Here's an example where I already have a developed base and one supply depot prepared in a good location. In case of an emergency, I can start building an engineering bay to enclose the marine. This quick reaction allows me to slightly strengthen my defense and minimize losses. Another way to create an entrenchment is to use the corner of the main building, such as a nexus. The corners of buildings are cut so that units can pass through them smoothly, and I will take advantage of this corner and cover an adept in the middle. I will save the adept from running by zerglings and prevent the damage they could cause. I can also use a shade and move it to the right place. I can even build around the shade and have an adept there after a while. I can do something similar with a marine. It's easy to get in and out of the entrenchment with Terran doors. I can also use different building configurations, for example, one supply depot and one barracks at the corner just like the Protoss did with the pylon and gate. It's possible to use the foxhole trick during a cannon rush. I can protect the first probe with two pylons to make it safe from attacks. Then, I can use a second probe from another side to distract the opponent, and after a moment, release the first probe, cancel one of the pylons, and start building photon cannons nearby. Another advantage of keeping a probe in a foxhole is blocking the enemy from building gas. It works on a similar principle as preventing gas steel by positioning your own worker close to the geyser. Now for some fun facts. We can insert a unit into the foxhole using a transporter, and similarly, we can extract it. If we happen to have a high Templar there, we can call for the help of his twin brother and merge them into an Archon, which will appear outside.
Here's another non-obvious thing. In a foxhole, we can only fit one unit. The exception is a worker. If we give it a gathering command, its mode changes to mineral walk and it can pass through other units. Although it can't get out of the foxhole, the game then recognizes that this place is allowed for another unit to enter. So, I'll use a bunker, set the rally point, and inject another SCV there. Then another one, and another. I can stack a larger number of SCVs on top of each other like this. And if I turn on auto repair, their repair speed will be incredible. Hey, what about Ultralisks? Well, Ultralisks are big and cool. However, ghosts have an interesting ability that can't be used while in a bunker, but can be used in the fresh air while in a foxhole. Someone might say, snipe them all. 